what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here this is going to be a review for the 2018 film bumblebee bumblebee is coming only a year after last year's god awful entry into transformer series uh transformers the last night the last movie that was directed by michael bay thank god because in this new film we get a lot more we have a, a bit of fresh a refreshing point this is like the refreshing point in the franchise uh so in this movie this is a prequel this takes place before the actual original movie that came out in 2007 starring Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox everyone everyone knows about that movie that was one of the biggest hits when it came out back in 2007 uh right off the bat this movie is Bumblebee itself is already established as being better in terms of like tone color tones that's one of the biggest things I noticed if you actually sit down and you look at Michael Bay's films compared to this one you'll see what I'm talking about there's like a a lot of oversaturated color tones in Michael Bay's films. Uh, there's a lot of more, lot more emphasis on sex, and a hell of a lot more emphasis on just the subplots that ultimately never go anywhere. Whereas in this movie, you don't have all that oversaturation. You have a love interest, but it's not to the point where it's overshadowing what the actual point of the film, where or everyone here to, is to see. It's not overshadowing the transformers or the people involved with the transformers in the battle that is going on between the human race combined with the autobots versus the, the decepticons uh you don't have all this unnecessary comedic comedic stuff that's constantly being thrown at you this movie has comedic elements but it's not to the point where it's just overkill it's balanced well there's a lot of humor in the movie uh the action is fine uh, like just everything about the movie was done so much better than the things we've gotten in the past this isn't like saying this isn't saying much because the only real decent film in the Transformers series in my opinion that we've gotten is the one that came out in 2007 I was around nine years old at the time when that movie came out so that was a big deal for me in theaters because I grew up with the uh, watching reruns of the old cartoons with the G1 designs Optimus Prime Bumblebee all of that good stuff um, in the movie anyway we have we're going back to the 80s that's a time when the transformers i think they were at their they were at their peak or they were most prominent in the late 80s or around the 80s time period uh the movie kept perfectly captures them in their prime uh we have the g1 designs back in this movie taking place in the 80s it focuses on a young girl uh Haley Ste Haley steinfeld portrays this character her name's charlie she's just turned 18. she receives bumblebee who has taken the form of a volkswagen which i think is like the more common way most fans are are accustomed to seeing him that's why we're not used to seeing him as that as the Camaro that we see him like in the uh, other films I think everyone's used to the Volkswagen the, the Beetle Volkswagen but anyway uh, he has come to earth in this movie after the Cybertron war has gone to hell and it seems like all hope is lost he has come to earth come to earth with instructions from Optimus Prime to set up a base for the Autobots to uh, take take base and take uh take recovery and take shelter until they can come up with another plan i guess to take cybertron back from the decepticons uh once he arrives he is uh he encounters like one of he encounters a, a group of a training uh, he interrupts a training station or a training routine going on between the individuals that are involved in sector seven sector seven has been prominent in this series since the original 2007 film of uh, they're the military group that's constantly involved in going after the Autobots and the Decepticons. They're always right in the thick of things, even though they don't really offer much. Uh, thankfully, they aren't as big as a big... They, they don't impact the film as much here, whereas they did in the past. It feels like that was what they were more, mostly focusing on, just this government agency trying to take down uh, take down these alien robots, like with no real motive behind it other than to just take them down because they're extraterrestrial beings. But with this movie, we have characters that get enough character development that it, it allows the audience to care for them. Uh, there's not a lot of... The action in this movie is not so overwhelming to the point where you can't identify who is who. And it's not just... You can easily tell who is on whose side. And there's not... The reason... I think the problem with Michael Bay's films is that he was trying to do too much. Or the film that he was directing, the script was calling for a bit too much. So that was kind of putting him in a bad spot to try to actually perfectly execute something something that was cohesive and coherent when it actually came to shoot those battle scenes because in a lot of the scenes in his films you can't identify which decepticon is which 
is this an Autobot? Who is this? Who is this? Is this Starscream? Who is that? Is that Megatron? It was kind of like a who you couldn't identify who was who or what was going on in some of his other movies because there was just so much being thrown at you and it's like it was like overwhelming to the point where you couldn't tell what was going on. It it just looked like a complete mess of just random explosion sequences. That's what it looked like. Now this movie does have that. It has all of those things that everyone loves from Michael Bay's films, which are his which is his amazing ability to make explosions on the big screen. Of course, the explosions in this movie are amazing. They captivating. They are very entertaining to watch. Uh, the battle sequences in the movie, they are in short supply, sadly, for this outing. But it's not... It was probably for the best because I feel like if they tried to do what Michael Bay did, it probably would have gotten to the point where now, okay, we're back where we were with the other ones. We don't know who's who. We don't know why. Why is this battle sequence for so long? And that's another thing that was wrong with Bay's films. His films, their battle sequences, they were just so long. So it was kind of taken away from everything else in the movie. And it just kind of made the audience want to get up and go at that point. But Bumblebee stars Haley, Seinf Haley Steinfeld, George Lindenborg, Lindenborg, John Cena, Jason Drucker, uh, Steven Schneider, uh, John Ortiz, and Gracie Dezini. Charlie is our main character. She's just turned 18. She's, she's like an outcast and her family an outcast at school she develops a bond with a uh, Volkswagen Beetle that she receives as a birthday gift from a junkyard man in her area he gives it to her as a gift she doesn't pay anything for it she comes to find out that this is a that the car is actually alive we find out it's Bumblebee uh, she teams up with Bumblebee in his in his quest to take out the Decepticons that are hunting him in this movie uh, they have run-ins with the military, so it's kind of like the formula that you, the formula that you've seen from the previous Transformers movies. But the difference is that it's not. The difference with these movies is that, with this movie specifically, is that it's telling a coherent story. It's not telling. It's not telling you too much that it becomes hard to follow. It's just Bumblebee and these two Decepticons that are following him, and then it's building the the relationship between Charlie and Bumblebee is constantly being built up throughout the film. So it's beautiful to see these two interact with each other. It kind of gives you like a vibe of the Iron Giant and E.T. the Extraterrestrial. If you're familiar with those movies, then you'll be able to see what I'm talking about in this movie. And judging from the trailers, I already knew that this movie was going to be something a bit different. And it was going to bring like a lot of focus to developing characters more because of, the, because of the way they showcased Charlie and Bumblebee in the trailer. So I just knew that we were going to get something different right off the bat, judging from the trailers alone. Uh, the two Decepticons that were hunting Bumblebee in the movie were Shatter and Dropkick. Uh, so right there, just 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 allowing two Decepticons to be the enemies in the movie. You don't have to worry about anything else. Nothing becomes. It never gets to the point where you have to wonder who is who, whose side is what. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff because there's only two two Decepticons, one Autobot, and they all have distinctive designs that you can easily identify what's going on. They don't all share similar character designs like the ones in Michael Bay's films did. Director Travis Knight. Travis Knight, I give my hats off to him. He did an amazing job of directing a very heartwarming script written by, I think her name was Christina Hodson. This movie injects the this movie injects life into the Transformers series because I felt like honestly after the first one they all started to keep declining down and it seems like this movie takes a is the first movie to take that right uh, path back up instead of going downward this movie seems to be trying to take the series back up and dig itself out of the grave that it's currently sitting in uh, if I had to give the movie anything on a scale of 1 to 10 I'd give it a 7 I thought the acting was fine. Haley Steinfeld, she did an amazing job as the female lead. I've known she was a good actress. I've seen some of her other other uh, pieces. She's amazing. The character of Bumblebee, not much to say with him. Bumblebee is amazing for what he does. He's adorable at times. Uh, when he gets violent, he's amazing. John Cena, while I felt he... I, I, like, I kind of enjoyed his comedic moments. He had his comedic moments. I think he shined most the brightest in those moments because there are moments when he's trying to be serious and i think a lot of people can agree that i couldn't really take him serious because i know john cena from uh watching wwe so i couldn't really take him serious when he was trying to be serious because i know i see him try to be serious on tv a lot and i don't take him serious then either but yeah if i had to give it anything on a scale of one to ten i'd give it a seven bumblebee while it is not a perfect film it does have its logic gaps here and there such as the fact that 
Bumblebee is arriving in 1987, but I do believe in the last night we found out that he was here during World War II. So that already creates a bit of a question mark. And then another thing about the movie, it's not really clear what it's trying to do here. I don't know if it's trying to completely erase the other films or if it's trying to start completely new. I know it's a spinoff, but I thought it was still tied into taking place before what happens with Sam with Wiki. So I don't really know because the, the whole idea that he arrived here in 1987, it feels like they're ignoring the other movies. And then there's a lot of scenes in the movie where you're like, no, that can't be right because this happened in this movie. That can't happen because this happened in that movie. You'll see what I'm talking about in the film. Um, the As far as like what scenes made me say this is an Iron Giant inspired or E.T. extraterrestrial film, there's like scenes at the very end where Bumblebee, he has like the moment, if you've seen the Iron Giant, you'll know what I'm talking about, the moment where the giant turns evil and he has the red eyes and stuff. We have like something similar to that in this movie at the end. Um, so in a way, it's kind of rehashing a lot here as well. That's why I'm giving it a seven. It's not, in order for it to go higher than a seven in the next entry, it would need to keep doing what it did here, but still offer a lot more, a lot, a lot of more original content. Because while this wasn't, this was not very original because Steven Spielberg has been attached as the executive producer for pretty much every film, but he got, he had like a more hands-on engagement with this piece. So you could easily see where he probably lended his help in certain aspects because of the comparisons to E.T. and all of the other works that he's done in the past over his decor decorated career. Bumblebee is a worthy entry into the franchise, probably the most, probably the best entry that we've gotten since the 2007 original film. Haley Steinfeld is awesome. John Cena is fine for what he does. Everyone else in the cast is great. Uh, the relationship and the character development, that's that's amazing. That's something that was definitely lacking in Bay's films. There was not enough time to get to know the characters. And when things happened to them, you ultimately didn't care. It became to the point where you were just paying to see a bunch of things explode on the big screen and with loud sound effects behind them. Uh, I give Bumblebee a 7 out of 10. I hope they keep doing this and I hope they keep going in the right path with future entries and make it better. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about Bumblebee down in the comment section below if you've seen it already. Uh, if you enjoyed my review, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know what movies or news you would like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.